Ha Mareweka, Nanani is a Carolyn Coda pony, Namanetereta, 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 Good afternoon, you guys. I'm a little bit out of breath because I was sitting way on the back row. <laughs> but um, I am the uh, boss for the Comanche Nation child care programs. Um, we're more than one program, but we have two uh, CNG budgets, and I have two PowerPoints, which are only one slide each and I will go over both of them with you. But I'm starting with the Early Childhood Development Center, which um, is the Comanche Nation's only early childhood program. Uh, as I explained in my budget hearings, uh, the Comanche Nation at one time had a head start back in the 60s, and uh, the funding was lost. Um, probably when I was like in first grade or so. So it was a long time ago. Um, I want to read a quote uh, about early childhood. It's time we stop treating childcare as a side issue or a woman's issue and treat it like the national economic priority that it is for all of us, Barack Obama. That was in 2015. It had, uh, early childhood is an economic issue, so I just want tribal members to keep that in mind because the foundation that is set for each one of our children that attends our early childhood program or any quality early childhood program is laying a strong foundation for them to be successful, to not be, become involved in drugs and alcohol or to, uh, to not go to college. And uh, long-term studies have shown the exact opposite. So I just want you guys to keep that in mind. This is a very important program. Um, on our slide, I go ahead and change it to the next slide. Um, we propose a $560,000 budget. I didn't, did not put that on the slide. Uh, last year, the Tribal Council approved a $550,000 dollar budget. And so I'm just kind of outlined the expenditures. We've asked for a $10,000 increase this year. Uh, the expenditures pays for, I want to mention something before I go into the expenditures. It is 100% direct services because it pays for operating costs and salaries for both of our tribally operated centers. One is located here in Lawton, Namanatet at the Early Childhood Development Center. And the second tribally operated center is located in Apache and it's named Comanche Nation Child Care Program, Child Care Center, I'm sorry. Uh, this budget will cover the salaries for 11 early childhood development center employees. We have a total of 18 early childhood development center employees, but the remaining seven are paid out of different budgets. It pays for the operating costs for the two tribally operated centers that I just mentioned, and it pays for quality services. I want to read our mission statement for the Early Childhood Development Center. Man, I must be out of shape. I'm still breathing hard. The mission statement. The Comanche Nation Daycare provides quality services through partnerships with families, providers, and the community while nurturing the development of the whole child and supporting cultural and family values. The additions that we ask for this year are going to cover probably not 100% of these, but it will help us to continue to improve our quality. Um, transportation costs, uh, we're always in need of uh, bigger and better vehicles. We talked with the CBC about looking for grants to get a minibus. Um, we could expand our services um, with the addition of staff. Uh, we're always undergoing improvements for our facilities, which costs money also. Uh, thankfully, we have CIP, and they have helped us out a lot, as well as our insurance when things go wrong, has helped us out in the past year. Um, expansion of infant, toddler, and school-age services. Um, 
recently the federal funding, um, which is a whole other part of our program, uh, had um, reauthorization of this child care development block grant. And so with that, we have just received final rule and we're just now going through trainings to interpret what those final, the final rule um, as pertains to this, to CCDF program. And so a lot of these will affect what goes on in the tribally operated centers because they are supported by the federal funding too. And so we have to follow the law, the uh, federal regulations also. And so one of them is expanding infant and toddler services. A lot of money is being poured into the younger, the babies and the toddlers because, because now it's commonly known that you know, it's if you don't if you miss those infant and toddler years, then you're just pretty much missing out. It belongs down here, and that's where the language immersion should be happening too, because that's when they develop their language, which is a whole other thing I won't go into because I'm real passionate about that. Um, school age services. Uh, they had talked earlier about the youth program not having um, something in Lawton, that's somewhere where we can help to fill that lack of services in Lawton if we were able to expand our services with the, with the child care center there in Lawton because we can serve up to age till they turn 13. And that's something I will look into in partnering with maybe I Am Indian and the youth program because uh, we're all about coordinating and partnering, we're all about that. Uh, the language and cultural curriculum developed and increased outreach and classroom activities. It's always been a goal since we opened our doors to go to language immersion someday. I'm very happy to report that back at the beginning of the fiscal year, I was able to go to a, to a national child development conference in Minneapolis at the Federal Reserve Bank there in Minneapolis. and. Indeed, it, was, it is an economic issue, and they have a tribal center there. But what we've, I came back, and we started our language immersion. So now we are doing language immersion with the two-year-olds at the Lawton site only. But we are ready to expand, and one of our goals is to have a, one classroom just totally devoted to language immersion. Right now, the two-year-olds are getting language immersion from a speaker, and a second language speaker that I have had on my staff for a few years, and they go into the classroom and they talk Comanche to each other and to the children. And so they pick it up so quickly, it's really amazing. But we have that going on right now, but our whole goal is to have more of our, our early childhood educators certified as Comanche language teachers. And right now, five people on my staff are attending a history course at the college to we want, I want them to know, not just think they know, but what our Comanche history is. And so I would, I would, I'm real proud that they are doing it on their own time, but the program is helping to pay for the costs. And so we are learning our Comanche history this semester, and I hope that it's something that continues as an ongoing basis to hopefully providing uh, language classes and history classes to our own staff. And I wish every um, Comanche Nation employee was interested in doing something like that. Um, the Comanche language teacher certifications is it's a project of mine uh, that I did as a global, uh, early childhood global leader in a world, um, an international fellowship that I was involved in. Y'all might have seen uh, an article in the PIO in the newspaper where I was 100% uh, funded to go to Brazil. And I went to um, Salvador, Brazil. And I also got to go to uh, the World Forum in Puerto Rico a few years ago. I had to do a community project. And my community project was early childhood educators certified as Comanche language teachers. And so that's something that I've been working on for about three years. And uh, every year we're getting closer to where the early childhood educators that work at our centers are getting more knowledgeable in our language. And I, I plan on utilizing the Comanche 
cultural, and I'm going to say it wrong, <laughs> the Comanche Language and Cultural and Preservations Committee certification process to certify my early childhood educators to become Comanche language teachers. Very good. There is a question from okay. an out-of-state person. Okay. They're saying, uh, Carolyn, from 8 to 13 years old children, they could go to an after-school program if Comanche Nation could expand a learning center for this program. Uh, I think she's directing it towards your program. I guess there is such a thing in other public school systems. Have we looked into this at all? There's, there's, not one in, there's not one in Lawton Public Schools. Okay. And I'll defer some of my questions to Desiree. If we, she knows everything about law and public schools. But let me, we, at our facility, we could expand. We do have some school agers. Our, our center is licensed until the children turn 13. But we are an early childhood development center, but the funding does cover up till they turn 13. But we would have to increase our staff, and we would have to have more physical space and facilities to do it. Does that answer it? Uh, there was a question for you. I'm sorry, Ms. Goombay, but this lady, she's seen on your outline, she said you had a great budget. Okay, first off, she said you had a great budget. But what she did say, she said she says she's seen outline 11 ECDC and 18 total. So what's ECDC's total FTE? That's my question. That's your question. Mm -hmm. All right. We have 18 Sorry employees. Sorry about that. Okay. We have 18 employees on my staff. In the child care programs, we have 21 employees. 18 of these employees work for the early childhood development centers. There are 11 in Lawton, 5 in Apache, and then we have a couple of uh, language teachers that are paid out of the ECDC budget also. Does that answer it? Are there any more questions? Do you have a question? No, we are a state licensed because we're supported by the federal funding, the CCDF. We cannot discriminate. The question on the floor was if you had to be Comanche, and the answer is? No. Okay. It is open to anyone. Okay, and then I have a second. Yes, we have program income. We have federal funding that supports the Early Childhood Development Center and the money that is made from co-payments and that comes into the Child Care Center is also considered federal monies and has to be used for the child care program. An uh, average right now, we've get, we're getting a little bit more since they reauthorized the law because the, pre, um, the National Indian Child Care Association and Tribal Child Care Administrators across Indian country advocated for an increase of the set-aside. The set-aside used to be not more than 2%, and so now it's not less than 2%. So the set-aside for tribal programs went up a little bit, but there's like 269 tribal grantees in Indian country. So that is divided by 269 tribes. It, it depends, uh, we pay ourselves for our children that are attending our centers. And so if they qualify for the for the CCDF, then we pay ourselves that. They may have a co-payment co that they pay out of their own pocket. We also get DHS revenue from people who qualify for the child care subsidy through the state. It just depends on how many families we have for DHS annually. I didn't bring my my report. I can tell you that we make 
on it uh, on the low end, 150,000 per year out of um, out of all of that subsidies, co-payments, and private pay. This um, this is this is not the subsidy. The low income subsidy, yes, you have to be income eligible. The CCDF, which is another is the federal, which I'm not addressing right now. I'm just addressing the ECDC budget. So, how what's the percentage of how many Comanche students you have? Or I'm not, I'm not, I don't know if they're called students. I may be saying in, the wrong term. Versus in Lawton, a non it's probably 98 percent. 39 enrolled okay. children in Lawton, but only two are not okay. Comanche. And then what about Apache? Apache is different. Apache is only licensed for 30 children. I think right now she has 20 children that are enrolled there, and I would say maybe 90, per, 90 to 95 percent are Comanche. Um, we have um, Apaches, Fort Sill Apaches. Of course, a lot of them live there, and we also their tribe pays for their subsidy comes into our center too, if they're not Comanche. So most of them are Indian. I think there's just a couple of non-natives in that center. Do you have any parents that actually pay, but haven't been paying? No, we have really strict policies. We have very strict policies. They, they we have, you wouldn't believe the policies we have. We've been open since 2002 and down here in Lawton. And so we have developed a lot of policies to address problems such as that. Okay, any more questions? Anybody? 